Next, we're going to be talking about installation and wiring of the four major components of the water level system. First, we're going to talk about the stilling chamber. The stilling chamber is typically metal. It can be stainless steel or galvanized, depending on the material construction of your cold water basin. Typical location for the stilling chamber is inside the tower in the cold water basin. As you'll notice, it's just a square chamber with an open bottom. The stilling chamber sets off the floor about an inch so mud doesn't clog it up. And it has two primary purposes, like we said before, to hold the, the uh, level probes and also to calm the water that might be on the outside. The water inside this chamber is calmer so you get more accurate reading. Inside the conduit box is a core grip for each probe wire. These are field adjustable up and down. Simply loosen this hex head with the needle nose pliers or your fingers. And that allows you to slip the conductor up and down to a height that you require. Once you achieve that height, go ahead and, and just snuck it up with your fingers. It's always good to leave some wire slack inside the conduit box. Some people want to pull it tight. If you pull it tight, then you cannot lengthen the probe. So it's always good to leave some slack in there. The other component is the makeup solenoid. We provide the solenoid or you can order your own. Installation of the solenoid is generally inside the building adding water to the water loop. There's an arrow on the solenoid that shows the direction of water flow. It's electrically actuated, so if you apply 120 volts to the solenoid, the solenoid will open. And that's not the only thing that helps it open. One thing that people don't understand is you also need water pressure in your line to assist the opening and the closing of the solenoid. And those charts are available in the spec sheets for this device. If you do not have enough water pressure and you energize a solenoid, it will not open. If you have too much water pressure and you de-energize the solenoid, it may not close. The control panel is a NEMA 4X fiberglass outdoor control panel. I'm going to swing open the door here, showing the internal cards and the relays that are inside the control panel. Proper mounting of this control panel is in this fashion right here. You'll see the, the back has mounting feet on it for installation onto the cooling tower or support structure. Make sure all your conduits come into the bottom of the control panel. Conduits coming into the top of an outdoor enclosure, whether it's this rating or any other rating, is really not a good idea because water can seep in. And this being a watertight enclosure, if water gets in, it can't get back out. So it's very common, best practice, to run your conduits into the bottom of the control panel. This is a 120 volt single phase, 60 to 50 cycle control panel. Inside here, we have a main circuit breaker that is rated at 6 amps. So this panel requires 6 amps of power. There's also another circuit breaker in here, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, which is feeds power to your solenoid. 